What we're going to discuss now is we're going to talk about changing heads and valve plates on an 06E compressor. Naturally, you start by removing all the bolts and loosening them, but you always have to remember to keep two bolts on the compressor screwed in a little bit. One, so you don't drop the head on the floor, and the other is that when you remove the bottom plate, there are guide pins and you don't want to shear them. If you do, the body has to be removed from the system. They're not repairable. So it's two things very important to, to note. Now, when you're doing it and you have your bolts all loose, you can basically take the bolts out that are loose and, and um, then you have to loosen the head. You take a lump hammer and give one shot in the top. Generally, that always loosens it. Take the head away. Be careful you don't drop the valve plate. When you're changing the valve plate on the compressor, you're changing it because there may be a problem with the compressor. So the first thing you do is you pay attention to everything that you're taking off the compressor. This is a suction cutoff head which has a gasket on the top and the bottom to keep the suction valve separated. You make sure that this gasket is intact, it hasn't been compromised, and it, um, it hasn't been overheated or bubbled. Any of those things will give you an indication that the condition of the compressor. Another thing is you always look at the suction, the discharge valves, to look at the fingers to make sure they haven't been chipped or broken. Okay, that's another indication of a problem. So when you get to this point, you lift the plate, you take it off gently, turn it down, and you take your valves off. What's important is you have to look at these pins. If you were to take this, Pull the head away, and if the valve plate is stuck and you hit it on the side, you can shear the pins. Once you shear the pins, the body's got to come out of the system. Another thing that's very important to note is that this particular machine, it's an air conditioning application, but it also, it, it has, um, it has notched pistons. With carry, you have three types. You have low temp, which has a flat top piston, and he uses a thinner gasket, which is an 040 gasket in thickness. Then you have the one that's notched, which uses a half valve and a full valve. The half valve always has to go against the piston to fit in the contour, and then the whole valve goes over that. So it's very important to, to note that. So when you're putting it back together, when you buy a carrier kit, it comes with solid two, and then a, a, a part half valve. Make sure you note what comes off, make sure you note that it's notched and you put back what you take off. And the replacement of, of the head is simple enough to do. You do what I just said, you put the valves back on. You set them in. And when you're inspecting the damage that you may have and you're looking for broken parts or whatever, always look at the stoppers to make sure they're not worn into the cylinder. If the stoppers are worn into the cylinder, your repair is, is just temporary because then these valves will twist when they're actuated and it'll just snap the valve in the future. So then it means you're going to have to replace it. The other thing you look for is that the gaskets are not broken here or here. That's high pressure from the high side uh, or too much compression or liquid in the cylinder. When you get liquid in the cylinder, you could break the rods, you can break the valves, but sometimes they all hold up and what doesn't hold up is the gasket and it blows. Once that happens, it causes excessive heat and it also tells you that the, the pressure from the blow between these means that you do have a slugging problem. Now you put your valve plate back on. One of the things that's very important in this particular case is a little bolt. This bolt is necessary on the unloading plates for suction cutoff. You put the bolt back in, you make sure it's in place, and then you put your head back on. Now the opposite of this, which is the older unloader head, which is hot gas bypass, 
and that has a head that doesn't have a separate divider in the middle. And what it has is, it has a place here for the discharge gas to go up to the top head, okay? And when you put that gasket on, since there's no bolt to hold it on, that gasket needs to, needs to match the contour of this. When you put the gasket on, you have to put the gasket against the head to make sure it all fits perfectly. And then you put the head on the compressor. The one thing is with the metal gaskets, this, the old gas, the old hot gas heads don't have a bolt hole. So you got to take a 10 snip and clip this. If you do not, and you leave this open in there on the plate, this will loosen. It can go back to the state and cause electrical failure. So it's very important that you make sure you clip it. Some of the newer plates may have the hole drilled, but it just depends. Um, so when you're, you're changing this plate, after you get it in place and you know your valves are good, the one thing you make sure always is that the gasket you're using on the bottom is the proper thickness and you don't get it confused with the low temperature gasket, which only uses a single valve and that's 04 roll in thickness. When you're done with this, you put your head back in place, it lines itself up, and you start by putting two bolts in to hold it. You put them all in, and then you torque it. And that's how you change an unloader head on the compressor.